Still muted. I don't care. Cool. Still muted. Is our webcam on? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, how do you go to the knob? Go to the left where that microphone is. It's red. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. up there. Can you guys hear me? Right there. Yeah. Yeah. Shake your heads. Thumbs yeah. up. There we go. Yeah. I can hear you guys. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Daniel, can you That's exciting. Are you going to click share? 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 Are you going to <laughs> hey! Hey! How are you guys doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing all right. Man, I'm sweating up a storm. That was a nightmare trying to get connected, but I'm okay. How are you guys? Okay. Are, are you guys all seniors? No. no. Not yet soon. You're all juniors, but you're going to be seniors in the fall. Most of, us, most, of most, of most of us. Some of you are repeating junior year. That happens. <laughs> gonna be okay. All right. Make it work the second time. No, so some of you are going to be juniors next year because you're sophomores currently. Got it. Hey, nice stuff. So, um, how many of you have taken the course before? How many of you have taken the class before? Nice. How was it? Okay. Fired up. Who's fired up with your scores? Check out the ATT scores. Woo! <laughs> when, when do you guys get out of school? Tomorrow. Whew, it was now or never. If we didn't get connected today, I doubt you would have showed up tomorrow. Nice. And then, um, how many of you are taking the June 11th ACT? <laughs> Who? <laughs> We're taking the June 11th ACT. Now, how many times do we talk about taking the ACT? Take it at least how many times? Four. 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 <laughs> Not complicated. Why? Why are you guys taking June 11th off? You all have 36s? I got 39. Sydney got 35. Lexi got 35. And she's. Hey, Betsy. Nice to <laughs> know. That's awesome. But keep taking it. Because if you get a 36, you get a phone call from the governor. That doesn't happen every day. So go for it. You can tell your grandkids. So keep going for it. Um, maybe take it one more time. But uh, the rest of you, seriously, why do we take June 11th off? Because we've already taken it twice. Is that it? No, we missed a deadline. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Well, you, can come. Uh, you could go and pay a late fee, which is a nightmare. And that's a ton of dough. You're paying like uh, 39 plus 25, 50, 64 plus like another. You're paying like 85 bucks if you go standby. Um, but I just love June for uh, the ACT because you've got all this time during the day, obviously it's summer, to just hammer, like hammer 45 minutes a day uh, with a study partner, do that like six days a week. And I see really big jumps in June. Now, obviously don't tell your friends that because it's, you know, it's socially risky, but it is awesome for jumping up your score. And so what I like to say is summer doesn't start until noon on June 11th. But if we haven't signed up and we don't want to drop like 85 bucks to take it again, I don't blame you. How many times are we going to take it in the fall? Who's going to take it zero times in the fall? <laughs> no! <laughs> Who's going to take it one time in the fall? <laughs> no! <laughs> Who's going to take it two times in the fall? Me. <laughs> yeah. No. The young scholar in front, you raised your hand three times. No way, <laughs> I didn't. I only like. Oh, oh, me? You can't see me. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. You can. You can. can't see oh, you yourself. Can't see yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you you raised your hand all day and I don't like this, but get a nice white sweater on. Oh, yeah, I was, I was confused. <laughs> oh, was so confusion. Well, anyway, I urge all of you who are going to be seniors to take it in September and December. Why? If your score goes down, nobody finds out. If it goes up, kaboom. Major scholarships, get into a better college. 
And you guys are highly coveted as college applicants. I mean, obviously, the state of Minnesota desperately wants you to stay in state, and they subsidize all these great public universities, and not just the Twin Cities, University of Minnesota down in the Twin Cities, but all the state universities across the state. But then all sorts of colleges around the country are under a lot of pressure to be sure to have geographic diversity in their student bodies. And you guys aren't just Minnesotans, which makes you somewhat unique, but my guess is you're kind of rural Minnesotans, and that makes you totally unique. And so in your applications, if you're applying to out-of-state colleges, and I don't mean to chase you out of state, but if you have any interest in applying out of state, be sure on your application essays to talk about how, you know, you're, uh, you know, you're talking about Minnesota somehow, which makes you pretty much more unique than someone from New York and Illinois and California and Texas, for, obviously. But also talk about, you know, um, uh, you know barns and uh, gravel roads and stables. And if, if, if there's any sort of rural element, it makes you very uh, unique. Now, let me ask you, do you guys come from a rural area? Is it pretty, pretty uh, is it a lot of farm country around there? We have 1,500 yeah. 1, people in our town. Perfect. Do not move. <laughs> Stay where you are because it gives you a huge advantage because they're not a lot like you. So my point is get super aggressive because you're armed with attributes that someone from Massachusetts, Connecticut, New Jersey would love to have. And basically coming from rural Minnesota is like adding two or three points to your ACT score because there's just not a lot of you. And anything that's underrepresented in college is coveted. So I urge you get aggressive. And I'm a little disappointed that so few of you are taking the June 11th test, but remain calm. We can go after that September and December test for sure. It's like 39 bucks and just go hammer it. And if you're free and reduced lunch, you get one free, two free tests total. And so maybe you can get it for free. So just talk to your counselor about that. Now, how many of you want to go to a four-year college? How many of you want to go to a two-year college? Awesome. In red, up front, what do you want to study at two-year college? Oh, I'm not exactly sure yet, to be honest with you, but I know I want to go to Northland and just get my generals and then maybe go to community college after that. We'll just see where it goes. All right. Now, I thought you were going to say, like, I want to be a welder or I want to be an electrician or I want to be a diesel mechanic, which is awesome because you start at, like, 40 grand a year and you've got awesome job security and start your own business when you're, like, 23 years old and you start hiring 20-year-olds out of a two-year college. Uh, and you're in your love and life. But if you want to get a four year degree and you start at a two year, I would just encourage you, unless there's like really strong, compelling reasons to be close to home, like maybe grandma's not doing well or you need to help out in a family company, there can be really important reasons to be close to home. But just in case there are not, at the very least, explore four year options because I think sometimes students just feel that, oh, the two-year option nearby is the cheapest. And it can be. But if you look around, you can find schools which will give you big scholarships with decent ACT scores and decent GPAs. And um, remember, four-year colleges, whatever you're paying includes room and board, whereas a two-year college often it does not. It's just tuition. So make sure you're comparing apples to apples. And just if you ultimately are planning potentially to be a four-year graduate, I would just encourage you only to go to the two-year college and then transfer to the four-year college. If you've already explored all your options, you've applied to at least seven colleges, and you've genuinely determined that it is the one that fits the family budget. If that's the case, fine. Now, if you want to be a, a welder, a diesel mechanic, that's different. That's an awesome first choice option. So I just throw that out there is don't be passive right now. This is the time you only get one chance to be a high school junior and senior and one, I mean, the world is basically set up for high school seniors. I mean, there's all of the hundreds and hundreds of colleges desperately want you, literally, they desperately want you kids to, to go to college. Now, many of them want to charge you way too much money, but they definitely want you. So aggressively attack and apply to at least how many colleges? Seven. Seven, and maybe as many as 16. And then ultimately, if you end up at the local two-year college, and you go for two years, and then you go to a four-year pond. But uh, I urge you just to make sure that that's a decision that's the product of fully understanding all of your options. Sound okay? Where did you go to college? Well, where did you go to college? I went to Bob's night school for mammals. Just be sure to follow me. I know exactly what I'm going to No, I um I went to I went to Stanford a long time ago. I graduated like seven or eight years ago. No. I uh, graduated a lot longer than that. But I went to Stanford and I'll tell you one reason I'm so passionate 
about what I do is that I didn't have particularly good college counseling. And I know a lot of people my age who feel that way. And you're thinking, well, hold on, Stanford, that was awesome. What are you talking about? Well, I really wanted to be a baseball player. I wanted to play professional baseball, frankly. And, um, you know, I went to Stanford, they hadn't recruited me, and my baseball career in college lasted like 90 minutes. So um, it really was not the perfect place for me. It's just like Harvard's not the perfect place for everybody by a long shot. And, you know, for me, at Stanford, I got a fine education. I made a lot of good friends. But in retrospect, I wish I had had someone who had asked me these kind of important questions that too rarely, that, that we rarely ask people in general, but especially young people, like, what do you love to do? What do you care about? What is your, what you, where does your heart lead you? Like, if, if you just understand um, these probing questions about who you are and what you want, and then you gravitate towards those productive passions, it's likely you're going to be much more fulfilled, also much more successful. Because if you do what you love, you're going to be good at it. I don't know anyone, all right, I know like two people who are bad at what they love. I mean, like, I know this guy who golfs. He's really bad, and he really loves to golf. I don't get it. And then there's another guy from high school I know who was really bad at basketball, and he loved to play basketball. They're like the only two people in my entire life who are bad at what they love. In other words, if you probe and just figure out, okay, what do I love to do? And start with an extracurricular. Trumpet, soccer, hockey, uh, singing, show choir, journalism, public speaking, whatever it is, debate, whatever it is you love to do as an avocation, a hobby, an extracurricular, pursue it now because it's great practice for the bigger decision, which is, okay, what do I ultimately want to do for a living? I mean, you're going to spend more than 70% of your adult waking hours working. So why not choose something you really love? Well, I mean, you got a lot of people in nursing homes who've never asked that question. What the heck is it I love to do? So start now. And one great thing that college can do for you is, A, it gives you the skills and knowledge to compete effectively when you get to be an adult. And we all want that. But secondly, it, it challenges you, and ideally, unless you go to like some adult romper room, it challenges you, and that accelerates self-awareness. I don't blame you for having no idea at age 17 what you want to do. I mean, I could barely spell college when I was 17. I mean, I barely you know, I had no idea what I, any idea what I wanted to do. And, and uh, I tried like three different careers in my 20s. That's fine. But in today's world, you really challenge yourself and, and, and probe what is it you love to do, and college can really help with that self-awareness process. So um, one reason I'm passionate about what I do is that I think, too, I know in my personal case, no one really asked those questions of me. I didn't get particularly good college counseling. And I want to make sure most kids are armed with an understanding of, A, you know, how important college is uh, and, and how important it is to graduate with minimal debt. Yeah. And, um, and also a better idea of, okay, what do you want to do? See, so you, you chase your productive passions. How about that for a long-winded answer? <laughs> Hey, one thing I want you to know about this crew, they broke our school record on the ACT score by a point and a half. Kaboom! I love that. Now, are you guys sending emails to graduates of former classes and telling them I told you so? Or, or uh, uh, you know, uh, and, and uh, I hope you're, you're telling, I, I, what are they, you're sophomores. Do you think you can beat this group? Oh, yeah. You're going to jump it again. I love it. Well, you know, that's an incredible accomplishment. Jumping your overall score by a point and a half. And they did better. That's than amazing. That. I'm sorry. They did better than that, too. Uh, the previous class record, 56% of that class took the test. 80% of these guys did. <laughs> I love it. Now, is this, Mr. Johnson, is this all over the local paper? Forget the local paper. How about the Minneapolis Tribune? How about, like, is there a big sign? I don't want anyone to be able to get into the building unless they have to duck their head under a monster banner that says all of that information. That'd be sweet. It's been in the paper. Okay. That's good. <laughs> well, I'll do better. I will do better. <laughs> <laughs> that is so great. And uh, our, now, this is the class that's just finishing its junior year, correct? Yeah. 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 All right. So now we got to make sure we leverage those higher scores into the best colleges for you at the lowest cost. Because too often we do everything right. We jump our scores. We do great in school. The teachers love us. We got nice GPAs. And I'm not just saying everyone's a 4.0 and everyone's a 35. I'm just saying 